بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء المرسلين مولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن سبيهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد One of the earthly manifestations of Rahmah is the mother. The love, the affection that a mother affords her child is really unparalleled in this world. The love that a mother shows for a child, you will not see it anyway. And this is why one of the meanings of the word womb in the Arabic language is Raham. And it emanates from the word Rahma. Because her love for her child is unparalleled. And it's very interesting that one of the meanings of the word um, mother, in the Arabic language is your origin, is where you emanate from. And in essence, man has two mothers. One is his biological mother. One is where he comes out from, the womb. And the other is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran. مِنَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ فِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ وَمِنْهَا نُخْرِجُكُمْ تَارَةً أُخْرَى From the earth we created you. And to it you shall return. And from it on the day of judgment you will be resurrected again. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ said that man when he is buried, he is buried at the very same place where he was initially taken from. And like the mother has deep love and affection for the child. Upon occasion, the Prophet ﷺ was traveling with a group of companions. And there was a woman who lost her child. And the Sahaba radiallahu anhu began to look for this child. And they couldn't find this child. And they would bring one child to the mother and she would say, it's not this child. They would bring another child and she would say, it's not this child. They would bring another child and she would say, no, it's not this child. Until finally they found her child. And when they brought her child, she began to cry. She began to embrace it and kiss it. And the Prophet ﷺ was observing this. And he turned towards the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. And he said, do you think that this mother would throw her child into the fire? And the Sahaba said, impossible. Look at the love and the affection that she has for her child. And the Prophet ﷺ said, the love that Allah has for his slave is greater than the love that this woman has for her child. Greater than the love that this woman has for a child. And like a biological mother wants good for her child. She wants the best for a child. You look, every single thing that man has on this world. Everything. His clothing, his house, his food, his natural resources all emanate from Mother Earth. Everything he has. The only thing he which is not from Mother Earth, is his rule, is his... And then what happens? Is man comes out of Earth, and then he begins to walk on the back of the Earth. And he regards himself as proud. And he becomes haughty. He walks on the back of his mother, and he regards himself as something special. And all the fitna, all the facade that you see on the world, Allah says, ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس all the fitna, all the strife that you see on this earth is a cause of man's doing. And this is why Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu mentioned that birds die out of starvation in their nest because of the evil actions of man. Every single fitna on this earth is caused through the actions of man. Why? Because Allah creates an equilibrium, a mizan, and it is man who breaks this balance who breaks his equilibrium and then mother earth turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that every day ma min yawmin illa wal bahru yasta'dhanu rabbahu fi an yaghrika ibn adam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that there is not a day that the seas ask Allah o oh Allah let us destroy mankind Look at the transgression of man. Allah, you gave man everything. And look how he transgresses you. And there is not a day 
that the seas do not ask Allah. Allah allow us to destroy mankind. Look at his transgression every single day. And Allah categorically mentions and graphically mentions in the Quran how Allah destroyed the nations who came before you through the seas. The Qawm Nuh, who were the Qawm Nuh? They were a group of people who knew Alayhi Salatu Salam called to for 950 years. Inni da'utu qawmi laylan wa nahara. For 950 years, he called his people. And in 950 years, only 82 people embraced Islam. And then Nuh alayhi salatu salam cursed them. And he said, oh Allah, do not leave any of them behind. Do not leave any of them behind. And then Allah let loose the seas and he opened the skies. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them. And Nuh alayhi salatu salam, he saw his son. And he saw, he said, oh my son, climb onto the ark. Climb onto the ark. Take Iman. And his son said, don't worry my father. I will take refuge on the tip of the mountain. I will climb the peak of the mountain and I will take refuge. And Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam said, La asim al yawma min amrillah illa man rahim. He said, today, no man will be saved. Ain al mafur wa illahu talib. Where are you going to run when your Lord is in your pursuit? The mountains belong to Allah. The earth belongs to Allah. So where are you going to go? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed Qawmi Nuh. He drowned every single one of them. There is not a day that the seas do not ask Allah. Oh Allah, give us permission to drown Ibn Adam, to drown man. And there is not a day that the earth does not ask Allah. Oh Allah, give us permission that we may small swallow man because of the transgressions of man. Every single day, the earth asks Allah, Allah, give me permission to swallow man. But we regard these as fables, as satirun awwaleen, because we forget there is not a day that the earth does not ask Allah, Oh Allah, grant me permission that I may destroy the son of Adam. But we regard these as fables, as al awwaleen, as the old stories, because we never reflect in the Quran how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed the Qawm Ad. Who were the Qawm Ad? The Qawm Ad were a group of people who were mighty. They were built like mountains. And they regarded themselves as the superpower of their time. And they were based in a place in Yemen called a Yemen Sa'ida, the most prosperous place in the whole Arab Peninsula. And they would say, we are the superpower of our time. Who is more powerful than us? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala records their arrogance in the Quran. He says, They said, Ad, they became haughty in the earth without any right. And they said, who is more powerful than us? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Hud alayhi salatu wasalam to warn them. And what did they say? They said, Hud, if your Lord has anything, then tell him to bring it on. Who is more powerful than we? We are the superpower of our time. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a wind. With the narration mentioned which from the power of Allah was equivalent to the snorting of an ox. And for seven days and eight nights this wind blew and it destroyed every single one of the Qawm Ad. And Allah mentioned in the Quran, do they not see that the one who created them is more powerful than they are? The one who created them is the superpower of the day. There is no superpower. And this is a reality. And in 1990, through the NASA photographs, satellite photographs, they found the place of Qawm Ad, 12 meters under the ground. This is how powerful the wind was. And they would say, Man ashaddu minna quwa. Who is more powerful than we are? And Allah says, do they now see the one who created them is more powerful than they are. And today you look at Yemen as Saida. That's what it was known as. The most prosperous place 
out of the Arab Peninsula because this was a mighty civilization. Now that part of the Arab Peninsula is the worst part. It is the most treacherous part of the desert. It takes anything which passes in it. It swallows things like the sea swallows it. There is not a day that the seas do not ask Allah, Oh Allah, allow us to destroy Ibn Adam. And there is not a day that the land does not ask Allah, Oh Allah, allow us to swallow mankind. And there is not a day when the angels see the transgression of man, that they ask Allah, Oh Allah, allow us to destroy mankind. Allow us to come down and destroy mankind. But we don't really believe this because we forget what Allah did with Qawm Lut. Who were Qawm Lut? Qawm Lut were a group of people who were homosexuals. And Allah mentioned in the Quran that nobody before you ever did this action. They would discard their women and they would marry men. And you know, just before the Pakistani earthquake, there was a man who married a young boy. And it was plastered all over the international media. Not only did he marry this child, there was a huge banquet. There was a walima. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the Prophet sallallahu said, there is not a day, but the angels ask Allah, oh Allah grant us permission. Grant us permission that we come down and we destroy mankind. And when the adhab came from the qawm al then the narration mentioned, that Jibra'il took the entire vicinity on the tip of his wing and he took him so high, so high that the angels in the heavens could hear the barking of the dogs and the croaking of the hens. And then Jibra'il turned the wings and this is how Allah destroyed them. And the Gome Lut, they were situated where you have the Dead Sea today. The Dead Sea, this is the lowest part of the world it is 800 meters beneath the mediterranean nothing lives in the dead sea why because this is where the adab of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came and i know what you're saying well these were kafir societies they happened to them but mona salman nadwi mentions that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said the Prophet ﷺ said that you will follow those who came before you, hand span for hand span, a forearm for forearm, pound for pound, inch for inch, whatever they did. If they fornicated, you will fornicate. If they were homosexuals, you will become homosexual. If they con, you will con. Even if they were to enter into a hole, you would follow them into the hole. And understand, you know, many people say that why is it that all these natural disasters only affect the Muslims? See, the sunnah of Allah is this, that the adhab of Allah doesn't generally come. Doesn't come for kufr. Because for kufr, there is an eternal life of doom. But it comes because of characteristics and traits. And this is why when Allah destroyed Qawm Nu, Qawm Nu were a group of people who knew alayhi salatu wasalam cursed. The Qawm Ad were people who thought that they were the superpower of the day. The Qawm Thamud were a group of people who destroyed the sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Qawm Lut were homosexuals. And this is why Allah destroyed them. This is why Allah destroyed them. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when my ummah will have 15 characteristics, then the adab of Allah will descend upon them. Then the adab will descend upon them. When the people's wealth will be usurped by those who are in authority, those who are rich, they will take the general masses of wealth and they will regard it as their own. And you look today, you look in Pakistan and in India in subcontinent, people will fight an election they will spend five lakh. Why? Because they know that when they become the MNA or the MP or the councillor, they will take 50 lakh. And nothing will go to the general public. Nothing. And the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, and the corrupt get corrupter. This is what happens. And when people will regard amanat 
when they are given a trust, they will think it is their own wealth. They will not give it to anybody else because they will regard it as their own wealth. And you see this all the time. Really, when the government gives money to organizations, it lines their own pockets. The general public never see this money. And this is a mana. This is a trust. And when people will regard zakat as a tax, they will regard zakat as a tax. And you see this, then they will make the most wild excuses that they can. When General Zia made it a law in Pakistan that every person, their zakat must be taken from their bank. What did so many Sunnis do? They became Shias. They became Shias. And they wrote that we are Shias. When zakat becomes a fund upon you, it is no longer your wealth. It belongs to the poor. Don't you forget whatever you have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how often do you see Muslims, people who go from England and they go to their country and in one day, in one day they will blow thousands of pounds. Thousands of pounds in one day. And in that very same city, in that very same village, are people who are chronically ill and they don't have enough money to buy the medicine. There are parents there who don't have the couple of thousand pounds or the few hundred pounds to marry their daughters off. And these people will blast thousands of pounds in a day. And when it comes to zakat, a zakat or maghraman, they will regard it as a tax. How often do you see people from here who go to India, Pakistan? What for? For dog fights? And they spend thousands of pounds on a dog fight? And in that very same place, there are Muslims who don't know where the next meal is coming from. There are Muslims in Nigeria who are starving to death and you are spending thousands of pounds on dog fights. But when it comes to giving zakat, you regard it as a tax. The Prophet said, when man will obey his wife and he will disobey his mother, when he will be good to his friends, and he will throw his father far away. And you see how many people today, you know, they're the murids of their wives. They're the murids of their wives. And they totally disobey their mothers. Why? Because they're infatuated with this new love. Your wife, wife has rights and your mother has rights. They both have rights and it's imperative upon you to fulfill the rights of both and not forget any of their rights. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, وَإِرْتَفَتِ الْأَسْوَاتُ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ And people will forget the sanctity of the masjid. They will shout in the masjid. Voices will be raised in the masjid. Janab kya hala? You will forget the adab of the masjid. And voices will be raised. People will fight. They will forget the adab. They will fight in the masjid. But really it's even past that now. You look at places in the world People are scared to go to the masjid because they fear that they may be gunned down. And they have police standing outside the masjid five times daily salah. And then the Prophet said, وَكَانَ الزَّعِيمُ الْقَوْمِ أَرْضَلَهُمْ وَأُكْرِمَ الرَّجُلُ مُخَافَةَ الشَّرِّهِ That the leader of the Qawm and the nation will be the degenerate, the scum, the most self-centered person. He won't be concerned about anything. He won't be concerned that he will have to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will be subservient to others than other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Prophet sallallahu said that they will be respected, not because people respect them, but people fear their evil. People fear their evil, so they want to keep them sweet because they know what nasty piece of work they are. And you look at the world today, you look at our leaders, nationally or globally, they're all Abu Regals. Illa mashallah, majority of Abu Regal, do you know who Abu Regal was? Abu Regal was a person that when Abraha, the Yemenis governor, came to destroy the Kaaba. The year the Prophet ﷺ was born, he reached Taif and he met a man called uh, Abu Rigal. And Abu Rigal said, I'll show you where the Kaaba is as long as you give me some money. 
And Abraha said, fine. And when he reached the outskirts of Makkah, Abu Rigal passed away. And what the Arabs would do is that they would pelt his grave. Why? Because this was a man who was ready to sell out his people and his religion for a dollar and a dime. And how many Abu Rigals do you have today? Really? How many people do you have who will sell out their Muslim brothers who are subservient to other people when the people, the leaders of the nation will be those who are the scum or are the lowlifes and they will be respected. Why? Not because people really respect him, but people want to keep him sweet because they know what a nasty person he is. You look at the Muslim Ummah, you look at the leaders, they are so evil that the Americans, when they want to torture somebody, they, they outsource their torture and these people torture them. And these are the state of the Muslims. You look at those people who are respected on the street today. Who are they? The drug dealers. Those parasites of society who will suck the bloodline of society. Why? Because they want to line their pockets. Why? Because they want to drive their big cars. And these are the people who are respected gunmen who will make other Muslim sisters orphans. These are the people who are respected in our society. Well, when those who are respected will be, why? Because people will fear their sin. They will fear the evil and that's why they will be respected. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when, when alcohol consumption, my Ummah will begin to consume alcohol and they will, men will begin to wear silk and people will begin to listen to music and they will hire women to dance and sing. And you look today, you look at many countries, what do they have? They have Kanjiriyan dancing. They hire women to dance. They have music. It's a norm. You know, there was a time when our weddings were plagued with Hindu customs. Where we, we would have the mendi, but because now we're Westerners, aren't we? We're Westerners. So therefore now we need to have the stagnites. We're women, we are women where alcohol is consumed. This is prophecies of the Prophet wasallam. And then the Prophet وسلم, said, And those who will come at the end of the Ummah, they will curse and abuse those who came at the beginning. And how often do you hear people saying that, that Abu Bakr and Umar were munafiks? How often do you hear people saying, slandering, saying that Aisha radiallahu anha was an adulteress, the most beloved person to the Prophet وسلم, how often do you hear people say, Oh, Imam Abu Hanifa, he only knew 17 hadith. He only knew 17 hadith. How often do you see your pseudo scholars, your new mujtahids, like the Irshad Manjis and the Frida Saks and the Fatima Meranisis, you know, who had no relationship. And they say, Oh, 1400 years Islam, they didn't really understand Islam. Their thinking was archaic. We are progressive, we are enlightened. And let me give, give you glad tidings. You don't have to follow the four mothers anymore. You don't have to take your fatwas from Mecca or Medina or Malaysia or Indonesia because there's a new mother out. It's called Wududi. And it started by Amina Wadud. And you know where it emanates from out of all the places in the world? You know where it emanates from? It emanates in America, mashallah. So now we must take our fiqh from America. You know when Amina Wadud led the Juma prayer, where did she lead it? In Washington. Very interesting. Why? Because maybe her Qibla is the White House, whilst our Qibla is the Black House. Our Qibla is the Black House. And the Prophet said, when you will have these characteristics, then when this happens, well, maskan, well, khaspan, when you have these characteristics, then wait, the azab of Allah will come. You will have earthquakes. And understand, when the azab of Allah comes, it takes everybody up. It doesn't spare anybody. It takes the good, the bad, the evil, the young, the old. It takes everybody up. It spares nobody. This is the nature. The Prophet said that when Allah sent the azab on a certain place, the angels come 
and they say, Oh Allah, in that place is a man who worships you all the time. He never disobeys you. And the Prophet said that Allah says to the angels, send the azab upon him first. Why? Because he saw people transgressing, but his color didn't change. His complexion didn't change. But after that, the Prophet said, if a person dislikes what is happening, then what happens is on the day of judgment, they will be resurrected according to their niyat. If they were good, they will be resurrected as good. If they were evil, they will be resurrected according to their niyat. But when the azab comes, it takes everybody up. And why Allah chooses certain places, that's not for us. Allah knows the hikmah and it is not for us to frown upon those. Because Allah will resurrect them according to their near. The Prophet ﷺ said, Mahdumul Bayt Shaheed, a person upon whom the house drops, he's crushed in the house, is a Shaheed. A person who is drowned is Shaheed. So those who died in Pakistan, those who died in the tsunami are shuhada according to the word of the Prophet ﷺ. But for us, it's what lesson that we take from this. What is the lesson that we take from this? And what is the lesson that was taken from this? You saw many people who as a consequence came closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But on the other hand, you saw many people who, were, who Allah sealed their hearts. How many stories were there of women whose arms were amputated, dead women whose arms were amputated so they could take the bangles, women whose fingers were cut so they could take the gold rings. How many stories were there of people saying, yeah, what was the benefit of us praying? What was the benefit of us praying? Allah didn't even spare the good people. Allah didn't even spare the masjid. See, this is a lesson for us. That we see the power of Allah and we remember, we remember another day which will be far greater than this where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal nasu taqu rabbakum inna zalzalata sa'ti shay'un azeeb. Oh, you, oh mankind, remember the earthquake and the zalzala on the day of judgment. Remember that because it is a shay'un azeeb. It is of great enormity. When women, when women who are breastfeeding their children will forget their children. And this earthquake, women were looking for their children. And they looked for their children. On that day, women will have their children by their breasts. And when this zanzala will come, they will throw their children to the side. Every woman who on that day is expecting will lose her child. And Allah says, you will see people as though they are drunk they will be falling this way and that way they will be falling this way and that way they will look at their drunk they've lost their senses but the reality is that the adhab of allah is shadeed the adhab of allah is strong and is great severity and this is why people will be of that state and Allah shows us these zalzale because He wants us to remind us of the zalzala of the day of judgment. This is what Allah wants to remind us. And Allah mentions another zalzala which is worse than both of these zalzale. It's worse than the zalzala of this dunya and it's worse than the zalzala of the day of judgment, of the final hour. And this is only for the believers. This is the zalzala of the inner. This is the shaking and the trembling of the inner. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states categorically in the Quran, do, do the believers think that they will enter into Jannah and they will not be tested with adversity and trials and tribulations like those who came before them was zulzilu and their spirits will be shaken. Their spirits will be shaken. Until the Rasul of his time and those who believed in the Rasul of his time began to say, when will the help of Allah descend? When will the help of Allah descend? You will, 
We, many of us today are being afflicted by this zolzala and understand this is the ultimate disaster. This is the final disaster. Why? Because many people, they see the zalzala, they see the glamour and the glitter of the West and they fall by the wayside. They see the power of the West and they see the humiliation of the Muslim and they say, if you can't beat them, just join them. And they fall by the wayside. And the Prophet ﷺ said about a time, he said, He said, a time will come that a person will be a believer in the morning and in the evening he will be a kafir. Such will be the negative portrayal of the religion. They will have their pseudo scholars saying, well, this is not a part of the Quran. 1400 years of understanding Islam, well, this is not how it was understood. We understand it and they will change the fundamentals of the Islam. And if you follow them, and you deny one of the fundamentals of Islam, then there is a fear for the Iman. And this is the ultimate zalzala. And understand, as believers, you will be tested. Allah mentions in the Quran that you will be tested. You want Jannah and you don't want to be tested? You want the pleasure of Allah and you don't want to be tested? In the time of the Prophet ﷺ, how were the Sahaba tested? The likes of Bilal, I don't have to tell you the stories of Bilal made to lie in the sweltering heat and they would place a rock upon his chest and then they said now denounce your religion and he would say ahad ahad one allah one allah and imam halbi rahmatullah alayhi mentions that bilal would dilute this torture with the sweetness of tawheed and he would say ahad one allah one allah and he would repeat this again and again he will repeat this again and again. Peer the sacrifices of Ammar ibn Yasir, who was Ammar. These were the entire family would be persecuted and tortured. His mother was the first shahida in the history of Islam. The first martyr in the history of Islam was a woman. The narration mentioned that they tied her legs. And the Prophet ﷺ would often go past the entire family. And they would all be tortured. And he would rub his hand over the head of Ammar and he would say, Sabran ya ala Yasir, fa inna mawidakumul jannah. He would say, Oh Sabr, family of Yasir, because your boat is Jannah. After years of persecution, these people came to the Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet ﷺ was leaning on the Kaaba, Bilal, Khubab, Ammar. And they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, all they said to the Prophet was, O oh, Messenger of Allah, make dua that the help of Allah descends. And the Prophet was leaning on the Kaaba and he sat up and he said, Inna kum qawman He said, You are a group of people who hasten. After years of persecution, the Prophet said, You are a group of people who hasten. And look at our state. We want Jannah. But we do not want to be tested. You think Jannah is an easy thing? We would make dua that Allah makes it easy for us. But this is the thing. Allah will test you and this will be your ultimate zalzala. When your spirits will be shaken. And you will say, when will the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come? Why does Allah have zalzalas? Why does Allah have earthquakes? In the fifth year of Hijrah, there was a zalzala in Medina. There was a trembling of the earth in Medina. And the Prophet ﷺ, he called the Sahaba and he said, Oh, believers, Allah wants you to do Tawbah. Allah wants you to do Tawbah. And He wants you to make Him happy. This is why Allah wants you to send zalzala. The Prophet ﷺ said, there is not a day that the seas do not ask Allah, or Allah allow us to destroy man. Not a day that the earth does not ask Allah, or Allah allow us to, dis to swallow man. Not a day that the angels do not ask Allah, or Allah allow us to destroy man. And then the Prophet ﷺ says, Allah says to the sea and the angels and the earth, He said, I know my servant better than you do. 
for I created him. I created him with my own hands. And if he is your slave, then do what you want with him. But if he is my slave, then I, then I am waiting for him to do tawbah. I am giving him respite, so he does tawbah. Allah stops the heavens from destroying man. Why? Because he wants man to do tawbah. And then the Prophet Sallallahu says, that Allah says, that if he comes to me in the day, I will accept his tawbah. And he comes to me in the evening, I will accept his tawbah. Whenever he comes to me, I will accept his tawbah. Isn't it time? Isn't it time that the believer's heart submitted for the sake of Allah? Isn't it time that the believer's heart now after all you see in the world? Look at, look, really, you are being kicked from pillar to post. Where every portion of the world, why? Because Allah wants to wake you up. Even the natural disasters are targeted towards the Muslim. Why? Because Allah wants to wake us up. Allah wants to wake the believers up because you are meant to be the Khalifas of Allah on this earth. Isn't it time? Allah says in the Quran, isn't it time that the believers, that they submitted their hearts sincerely in the dhikr of Allah. There was a man called Fudayl ibn Iyaz, the famous saint of his time. And the narrations mention that he, will, he used to enjoy himself. And upon occasion, he was going to see his girlfriend in Makkah. And he heard a person reciting the verses, Alam ya'ni lilladheena amanu an takhsha qulubahum li dhikrillah. Isn't it time? Isn't it time that their believers submitted themselves in the remembrance of Allah? And such was the impact of this verse on the heart of Fudayl ibn Ayaz rahmatullah alayhi. He said, Oh Allah, it is time. Oh Allah, it is time. And then the narrations mention that Fudayl ibn Ayyaz went to the Haram and he is known as the Abidul Haramain. He's known as the Abidul Haramain, the worshipper of the two holy cities. And why he's known as Abidul Haramain is because the narration mentioned that there is not a portion in, in, in the Masjid Nabwi or in the Makkah where his tears did not drop out of the face of Allah. Not a portion in the Masjid of Makkah or the Masjid of Medina where his tears did not fall out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And really, my dear respected brothers, whatever is happening in the world today is for the believers to take heed. It is for the believers to take heed. Allah sends these calamities down. Why? Because He wants to wake us up. He has a concern that those who were meant to be the Khalifas of Allah have forgot their way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who live and die for the sake of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us united in this dunya. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reunite us in Jannah for those. Inshallah, straight from here, I'm going for Hajj. Inshallah, I request all of you make dua for me. If I have transgressed the rights of any, and I'm sure I've transgressed the rights of many, if I've said anything wrong today or previously, I ask you for your forgiveness. You make dua for me. And inshallah, I will make dua for you.